You all right? It's TPK. Do you want to fight about it? How are we doing? This is Fragments, episode 14 of Fragments, our weekly Demi Plains of Dread campaign, minus one Hazim. It is Mrs. Hazim's birthday, so they're celebrating that, and we wish her harm. I mean, a happy birthday, um, and Hazim will be back with us next week. So kind of a slower night tonight, a quieter night, ladies' night, uh, Vanessa and Whisper. Um, I'm going to throw them straight into combat. Uh, yeah, if you want to go around, say who you are, who you're playing tonight, and then I think I will call on Luca to give tonight's recap as well. I am Jack, and I'm playing Vanessa Lucidia. I am the clock, and I am playing Whisper. Um... You want me to launch right into what happened? Or? Yeah, but also after saying okay. that, the mad cartographer has put in the Twitch chat looks around awkwardly. <laughs> We're obviously watching a film shortly, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, take take us away, Luca Lock. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So last time uh, we were heading back, having fought that weird creature that was looking for a talisman from us. Um. And we were head back to the fort, and we had a whole lot of debate about whether to actually go back to the fort or to go on, um, and just basically make our escape, um, possibly heading north to Silvervas, uh, which is like the, the outcast camp. Uh, we decide to bury our stuff, stop in at the fort, and they're like, "Hey, guess what? We need to go to Silvervas." So. Uh, that worked out well. Apparently, Dennis, the local innkeep, his son has gone missing. Don't know what that could be about. Uh, he is suspected of desertion. So, uh, for whatever strange reason, um, uh, Falcovnia, this fort, wants to turn a, a single loss into two and kill Dennis uh, for his son disappearing. Um, because apparently they just have unlimited number of people that aren't zombies, um, and they don't mind uh, just wasting just lives. Just like rabbits. Um, so, uh, in an attempt to, in you know, we're we're uh, we've been voluntold and are willing to go to Silvervas uh, to search for this Kheb, Dennis's son, see if he's there. Um, no doubt that we'll find him. Uh, and, and he's probably just a deserter now, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still maintain that maybe he was eaten by those owl bears, but uh, so we are walking along. We come across some beautiful open fields, um, and happen to stop for a bit of silfle, which is uh, eating outside in the open air. Um, and we have a little bit of a picnic and then continue on to where there is a large tree falling across the trail suspiciously. You heard the uh, tree come down. Did we? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, a tree fell in the forest. We were there to see it and to hear it. Um, and then there were bandits that uh, showed up uh, popped out of the ground like daisies, uh, wanting to uh, rob us for everything we were worth. Um, it seemed that they were robbing in an attempt to just sustain their own number at their camp. So we managed to convince them uh, that we would instead just help them and please do not rob us, sir. Uh, so they have taken us to their camp, Silver Voss, and we are there now where they are having us wait so that some some big head honcho can come give us a glance over and make sure we're not up to no good. Um, and also I have, I think I inquired about their sick and injured that they seemed to have a number of. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's about where we left off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, can you remember what the head honcho's name was? 
you'd think I would be able to, uh, since we were literally just talking about it, but no. It's like the most heavy metal name. Bruce Dickinson. Zombie. Yeah. No. The Grave Ghoul Ripper. Ripper. Ghoul Ripper. I was going to say Grave Digger. I don't, I don't know why. Okay, Ghoul and Ripper. And for a friend of mine who messaged me for up the week, just to clarify, that is Ripper, as in to rip. He is a ghoul rip. Oh. Um, I'll tell you later. But this person, remember, if you remember, had the full facial tattoo of a Talon officer as well, um, but was somewhat of a disheveled figure. Uh, good, yes, you may have one inspiration. Um, it's also been a while since it happened. Vaness, if you would like a point of inspiration too, feel free to tell us what actually happened to Caleb. I only have uh, one uh, amendment to make to what you just said. Um, the most heavy metal name is actually Libby Kilmeister, but totally fine. Okay. I hear it correct that's, that's it. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, My but, English teacher uh, had a close affiliation with him. No, oh, nice. Oh, uh, so for those who don't know, uh, kebab, uh, kehab, uh, well, kebab because he's really just food. Um, had a rather uh, intimate night out with our lovely lady Vanessa, and uh, in the process was devoured. Uh, where his remains are, who knows? You know, maybe in the big you, bin. You and me. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no. I mean, you know, this is this is this is no one's business but ours. Okay, yeah, you may both have one inspiration. So um, I have applied it. Oh, excellent. And we'll probably have to use it very soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I will take us through to the shack, which we ended last session in. Make sure I'm on the right one. Yep. Now, was this space like as fully like decorated as this? Yeah, I feel like we were in some shitty tent. Not yeah. you weren't in tents. You were brought to this place, um, and it was pretty crummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Uh, and are we in front of the Ghoul Ripper, or are we waiting to see him? He had been brought in, um, or rather came in, and this is what he looked like. Where are we? All right, all right. I see if it were. And Lance Henriksen thing going on. Lance <laughs> um, Just to trust that music. So, yeah, you've been talking. Um, he had looked across you all and had sort of confirmed that he did not recognize you um, from Morfenzi. Particularly Juvenes. Um All of the explanations and excuses you'd given when you were confronted with him had to be weighed against the fact that you were wearing more fancy attire. Um, mm -hmm. So that led to a lot of suspicion. But a ghoul ripper sort of looks across her companions and says, You can stand down. And weapons are slightly, slightly lowered. Hazim falls quiet and drifts back to a corner. <clears throat> well, it's lovely to meet you, Mr. Ripper. Or is it one word, Ghoul Ripper? 
Let me sort of just chuckle a little bit. Skender. But ghoul ripper to most. So well, what would you prefer us to call you? Ghoul ripper. Most don't know. Most wouldn't know me by Skender. A name, a nickname, a title, an alias. Much easier, much catchier flows when you are a, a true born of Falkovnia. And there's a bit of a loud chuckle around the room. Yes, I imagine uh, a name like that gets you in many places and keeps you out of many others. Not anymore. Keeps me out of almost all the places. We've said that you. Oh, what Luca. is it that you do here, Ghoul River? Steal, mostly. Take what we can from the Talons and from Drakov's men. Move when we have to, which is often. Feed our children. Stay alive. And at the start of every month, try to go to ground as best we can and wait it out. You do not fight the undead. No, we fight the undead. But also, we have to fight against Drakov. Yes, she doesn't seem to take kindly the bandits. Or, as she claims you are. <laughs> yes. By definition, we are through and through. We harry travellers on the road, we steal, we take what is theirs. We very often kill them, in the case of talents. The difference is we would not sneak into Lekar at night and put children to the torch. Did you happen that... upon... Oh, go on, Whisper. I was... Is that something that has happened here? Countless times. We are exiles. Deserters. Those who have questioned... The regimes here. Drac of sanity. Hmm. It is to flee or to be impaled. Did you happen upon uh, a particular traveler, a uh, young man, uh, shocking red hair, uh, nicely built, uh, might have been carrying around an instrument of some kind, a uh, lute, perhaps? No. You ever snuck through here? Well, first of all, how recently? A few days ago. No. In that case, no. You're the first to travel in this direction in over a week. Beyond just the undead, is there anything else between here and, and the fort that is uh, it's dangerous? Any kind of beasts or creatures? Gondagal might get you. I know you spoke about them with some of mine. The undead, yes. Non undead, very rare. The occasional bear, but it's not too many. We stay clear of Dekovan, across the lake. No one who goes there returns. Other than that, between here and Willow Watch, the road is fairly simple, unless we undead stagger on. Can you tell us more of this Gondagal? We were led to believe that he was in charge here. No. I believe you were talking to Rekis about this a little. On your walk here, so she tells me. Gondagal, he's no friend to us. Gondagal is a trick. An agent of Drakov. If your faith 
is tested if you've been whispering to the wrong people. Along comes a fantastic offer to betray Drakov entirely. Many take it. Never seen again. No doubt on a spike above Lekar. What makes you think this? What, do you, well, what, what proof do you have that this is a trick by Drakov? Besides people going missing. Because I have known good, loyal people who would never otherwise flee, go to Gondagirl, or go with Gondagirl for good, honest, selfless reasons to help others, etc. Vanish. One of my best, he swore he would go purely to find out what happened and report back if there was any way. Never seen again. It is a trick. And maybe well, that or things change when he actually got there. Maybe the grass was greener. Very trusting. We can't afford to. Look how we're forced to live. I was told that there were sick there are. There are starving. There are exhausted. Children who are unable to get a full night's sleep. Every night it is beyond dead or torches in the distance. We cannot light fires. We sneak around like rats. It wears the body, but. Even more, it wears the soul. Some of these children, they reach a point where to look at them, they're healthy beyond being hungry. But chased and harried and hunted all day, every day, their bodies just... They just give up. I would like to see to them if I could. Based on what qualification? They say you are a healer, but... Yes, that is the qualification. Do you need proof? To let three strangers into a room with almost vulnerable children and injured? Yes. I need proof, for their sake. Uh, this is when Vaness turns to uh, to whisper and whispers. Um, how much do you have? How much power do you have right now? Enough. Um, and like I, mechanically speaking, I could do uh, first aid very easily, where I use my hit dice on someone. That needs it. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, let's across go. the table, I was going to say that uh, Vaness uh, was actually going to do something like a demonstration, but I, I don't want to like waste a healing word or something like that. If you want to just use yeah, it's just a it's just a cantrip, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Then yeah, uh, Vaness rolls up her sleeve, uh, still keeping her glove on, and uh, she pulls out her dagger and slices herself across the forearm. This collective sort of discomfort of just... If you um, don't mind whisper. Yes, of course. And I will just come over and put uh, my paw on your, on your arm uh, and cast first aid. If I had been a wand, like, oh, God's sake. This uh -huh. <laughs> they were like, I don't really see anything. No, no, I'm not, yeah. not letting you near our kids. And yeah, describe what your first aid... Well, it's kind of a collaborative effort, isn't it? Tell me what the healing process looks like. Um, Because it's my actual hit dice being used, it would look almost as if, uh, for a second, light, like almost like luminescence or like color of my skin 
it dims for a second and makes the other person look brighter, more vibrant uh, before us both kind of fading back to normal status. Anything from you, Vanessa? I'd say that once she removes her paw, um, that there's still like the outline of blood, but the wound itself is just a minor scar. Yeah, and you see them all sort of step in a little bit. Um, Ghoul Ripper sort of leans right forward, sort of takes me, well, re reaches out a finger and looks at you, Vanessa, like, if I may. Go for it. And just sort of traces a finger down it in a, ve a very, very, uh, it's not a little gentle touch, it's very much a, uh, uh, just sort of checking, yeah. it's like, how, how is it you can do that? I am blessed by my god. He's the god of the sun. And for he, for uh, brevity's sake, we'll say you have to explain what a god is again. <laughs> yep. Unless, unless you like to play that out, but there's a general... I, I will explain that um, uh, he is the sun and he made the world. Yeah. Uh, and he looks favorably upon me and my people because of a promise ages yeah. ago. And they seem like... They seem very impressed. So, and... You, do you also have these talents? Or are you her protector? No, not not her talents. And, uh, it isn't that she needs protection, but uh, I am her traveling companion. Yes. Come. And um, they open the door and this a band of them Heads out, um, walking through Silbervas, which I'll now show you. It is very much, I mean, just to remind you, I showed you last time this splash screen, Silbervas, a ramshackle town. Many of the buildings, um, they're a mixture, boarded, burned out, seemingly just fallen slightly to ruin. There is a ruined stone keep in the background, very similar to what is um, functional in um, at the guardhouse in Fort Watton, only larger, um, grander. You can tell that I mean, Fort Watton is clearly an outpost. Looking around this place, it was clearly at some point a town. Yeah, this, is, this was a decent... Curse of Straw comparison, Village of Barovia, whereas Fort Watton would be like the Valaki Vistani camp in sort of size. Um, you make me perception checks, both of you. Uh, hold on, I am. I had to reload because the okay. page wasn't. But also, if you want to roll it for yeah, me. Yeah, I will roll it. I will roll it for you. <laughs> with a 14, that's 15 for Vanessa. Cool. And whisper. Percepcione. Ooh, that was very nearly a dirty, a dirty like 23, right? 16. A couple of observations that you both make walking around um, through this town. And then we'll cut to any conversation you want to have. Um you notice a complete absence of any sort of chimney smoke. Um, this is not an active town. There are no horses hitched. There is no produce in the street. This like, appears to be abandoned, despite, yeah, for all intents and purposes. Any conversation that happens when you're walking from a town by like the gang that you're with is extremely low. Like, just not much higher than a whisper or a mutter. They're talking so quietly that we probably won't be able to do it, or our microphones won't pick it up. Like, with the noise cancer, everyone is very much the hush-hush voice. Um, 
everyone seems very on guard. Hands do not come off weapons. And the town clearly has what was a main road. You know that the road from Fort, um, from Fort Watton to Lekar runs directly through this town. As you walk, um, you are very much taken the side roads and back alleys. There is an aversion to the main road through this town. But yeah, as you're walking, a couple of members of the group sort of peel off and go about their own business and give explanations that they're going to their families or to perform tasks and the group dwindles a little bit um, until it's yourselves, Ghoul Ripper, and about two others. And yeah, you're just walking along, heading in the vague direction of this keep. Does it look as crumbled as this very clearly yeah. not Thunder Tree Ruins? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. 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 <sighs> okay. Um, are we being gawked at or anything like that? Or is it just... There's not many people around. Um, you okay. see the occasional sort of glance out of a window and there's you know, the interest that people, strangers are being escorted around by... Guards and the ghoul ripper. Um, you and Hazim draw your usual looks of curiosity. Um, okay. And ghoul ripper is like reacting to Vanessa doll in the, the Warfenzi gear. I would say that is a curiosity that is on part. You know, on tallies of the fact that you're being escorted. They would. Mm -hmm. It'd be safe to assume maybe people might make the assumption that, oh, look, they've captured a guard. They've captured a more fancy agent or something like that. But then they're also like, is that a fucking fox? <laughs> Just yeah. like, it's it's one of them. Um, yeah, and Ghoul Ripper, like, keep your voices down whilst we're outside. Was it the undead or other reasons? Because of the undead, because... If, t if Drakov's talons are doing any sort of sweep of the town or staking us out, if they have a raid planned or if any errant officer just fancies killing a few of us today, we don't want to draw attention. We stay clear of the road in case they're riding through. We go to the back streets. We keep quiet. How often Understood. do these raids happen? Sometimes, several times a week. More often, at the shift change. If a mad dog is changing shift, as she soon will be, we will be going to ground when she passes through. When was the last raid? Just under two weeks ago. The mad dog. One of Drakov's lieutenants. She's currently down at the fort. The redhead. Yes. My men took you for her at a distance. I wouldn't say I'm that unwashed. But, uh... Yes, she is, uh... She's quite the handful. You're saying at her shift change, she is called back and someone else is sent out to the fort? Yes. They change. They change shifts. The road to Lekka passes through Silbabas. And she will take a day's leisure with a group of her most devoted. And we'll make a little sport. I will die very happy, even under a pile of undead, if I manage to gut that bitch. I believe you would be doing many a favor. Finesse looks like to speak. 
No, she just kind of glances over at uh, at Whisper, almost surprised at uh, the kind of venom she has for words. You have not... Uh, she's not endeared herself to you, then. No, I believe she is sick, unwell. She has what my people call a sort of a war sickness that infects and can spread to others. You'll see it in animals occasionally. They froth at the mouth. It is different in people, but still very much the same. Hmm. Tell me of this place you have come from. You've come from where the rat came from, yes? The rat Janelle. Oh. oh. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we did. It, I'm unsure of where they came from. Beyond, beyond the mists? Well, there's a lot beyond the mists and uh, I don't think all of it is the same Whisper and I and Pazim came from the same plane but uh, this person that you speak of he, they may have come from elsewhere somewhere we haven't even been to uh, I thought you'd maybe have some commonality between you It is possible, that, but we do not know. Yeah, other than the fact that we are all fish out of water, for lack of a better term, uh, I'm not certain we have much in common beyond that. I see. And what are your plans after uh, you have ascertained that this boy of yours was not here. Will you continue on to sure Lekko? Very well. And yeah, he continues leading you up via a bit of a bit of a roundabout route until you start going uphill. Um, it is not raining, despite the art you are about to see. Ah, but I still have token vision set to it, I believe. One moment. There we go. Oh, I also forgot to show you. I apologize. I apologize. The map. There is a map of uh, some of us that I will show you. Oh, you're making it so mad. <laughs> I'm making it so what? Yeah, Andre's getting so mad at me. Oh, what, loading more than one thing? Yeah. So yeah, this is sort of a reflection of, of the size of um, Silbervas. You were making your way down to um, this keep from here. But you effectively took sort of back roads and, and cut through buildings and took a very long way, only dipping over the main road at the last possible minute. Um, an inaccuracy on this map, there are not all of these side branches. You, you're you heading north. We're going to say that to the left is south, and you've been riding right north up towards. Uh, so it's flipped It's flipped 90 degrees. Um, but yeah, you've been making it. You've been making your way around. And you would have seen that the fields... The fields are spoiled and unmaintained. The gatehouses... Um, burned in some cases and, and ruined. This is not a well-maintained town in any sense. Um, but yeah, sorry to annoy your... Um, sorry to annoy your foundry once more. 
But yeah, you come to the ruins of a keep. There are a couple of guards, for lack of a better word. They look to be bandits, but um, you know, they, some of them can take. Why is why, why are we grinning so much? They just recognise it all. Uh, yeah, no, I've just stormed this castle so many times. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Cragmar Keep, but yeah, yeah okay. Um, you see a couple of even even the guards here are hiding. The guards you know peek around corners and and pop heads out. And there's a moment where um, Ghoul Ripper beginning to approach the keep just gives what's clearly a bit of a signal whistle. And there's a quick whistle back, and a couple of guards pop their heads out, um, and you are ushered in to yeah a heavily ruined keep um rubble strewn from the ceiling hung at some point there are parts where entire walls and door frames have been torn out and they've made best we can do there are like tapestries that have been repurposed and hanging as dividers sort of cordon off areas a lot of just bed rolls in open areas um you see a couple of fires but they are all out currently there are no fires lit um, and although it, it has been a warm day, day's getting on a little bit, and you do see more than one person who's slightly more bundled um, and sort of rubbing themselves. You would hear more than one mention or mutter that you know it will it will soon it will soon be nightfall, and they'll be able to light a couple of a couple of modest fires then. Yeah, what are you both doing as you're being led through this this, this modest keep? Honestly, yeah. I feel like I'm looking around a lot, just trying to take in as much detail as Same. possible. Same. Um, but act not so much like I'm just intently scanning everything I see. Both of you maybe perception checks. Five. Five. That's, that's, is, that a, is, that a, is that that become a six for you, or is it an S? No, it was a four total plus one. Okay. Um, seventeen. Looking around, you as you're led through, and there's a little bit of you know idle talk, um, and a bit of a, a tour being given. You're sort of shown where certain things are, where privy areas are, and so on. You see that everyone's very hungry. Everyone is exhausted and, in a lot of cases, cold. Um, you haven't seen any children yet. The youngest person you've seen is maybe 13, 14. Um, she's basically like a, a grown woman by Barovian standards in terms of her expect the expectation of her to contribute to like the defence. Um, you see ruined, battered equipment um badly organized piles of boxes and crates which is very much you know they've taken what they can find and are stacking and, and hoarding it people seem to be run down but treating each other well you see like Several small acts of like you know generosity and care given as as you're walking through. Um, it is quite unlike a lot of the attitudes that you've seen in Fort One and how you've heard Drakov's regime is. Anyway, um, you would also have seen as shortly after you entered a a plinth that had enough short leg that clearly there was a statue here at some point um but it seems to have been torn down and would we like this would we be able to guess that it was like a statue to Drakov based on yeah I would, you know, so. any kind of... I would say so yeah uh i am going to just 
uh, look at Ghoul Ripper and say, is this where you are able to retreat to most when being raided? Or do they get in here as well? There is no way they, they don't get. It depends on how many they're willing to send. We escape when we can. There are escape tunnels out of here. All depends on when and how bored they are and how many they send. This is the most defensible, but we will never, with our numbers and their numbers, be able to engage them directly. And, and where do you keep these children? I have seen none about. We're getting there. It's just sort of like leading you, leading you through um, the keep. And you'll come to a, not a room that is outright guarded, but you'll see it is in a, it just happens to be in a more densely populated area. Um, it isn't like, you know, there's no halberd, halberd wielders that cross over outside. It's just naturally a heavy traffic sort of area, deeper in, in the keep. Um, and you'll see the, what was your roll? 17. You see that people straighten up a little bit when um, Ghoul Ripper is coming. Um, both of you make me an insight check, please. Oh, come on. Uh, weird. Um, weird? What's up? Because the dice showed that I rolled nine, but it's saying in chat that I just rolled a six. Uh, for me, it says that you, well, maybe... rolled a, you rolled a six plus one yeah. plus two for a total of nine. Yeah, I'm just saying, maybe I was misreading the dice, but it looked weird because I thought it rolled a nine, but whatever. Was, it, ups was it upside down? Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> Usually there's As like I was a talking, line I was like, or oh, a dot. <laughs> yeah, I probably just missed a dot. But yeah. um, with a 14, yeah, people, people straighten up and sort of go out of their way. You see people try and get some sort of like acknowledgement or or moment with the ghoul ripper and you get the impression that although people might not be overly chatty here it's not that like it's not so much that he's feared the way that arena has been commanding attention um but it is more that he's very respected and liked even if people aren't very very chummy chummy with him it's um it's more Maximus with the guards at the front than it is uh, Commodus with the people back in Rome. He's, uh, you haven't watched, you, is Gladiator reference lost on you? This campaign, this campaign is over. Um, yeah. I haven't it, seen the movie in like 15 years, okay. Yeah, so. same. I saw it when it came out. I yeah, once, okay. when I was 13, I sat through the whole thing at a French holiday site in French, just to see if he did actually say Je m'appelle Gladiator, which he did, uh, just in case you were Fantastic. wondering. Um, but yeah, Ghoul Ripper is respected and and is liked by everybody. Um, great great reference, DM. Okay, thank you for Mad Cartographer, who isn't here and playing today. Um, eventually, you get to a room in the back of a keep, and you go in, Ghoul Ripper goes in first with two of the guards, and you go into a bit of a hall. The floor lined, piled with skins and furs. There are a few bed rolls in here. Um, it looks like it was probably a bit of a hall or like a, a, a grand bedroom back when the keep was originally built. It kind of puts you in mind slightly of that room with the enormous meeting table in the overgrown guardhouse in the forest. Um, there are maybe 10, 12 children and young adults in here who are almost all 
bedridden. Um, a couple are sort of sat at the table, picking at you know meagre rations or trying to read what's left of a book. They themselves look to have more sort of um, heavy physical injuries than anything else. You see one of them with um, what looks to be a compound fracture on their arm, which is not healing well. Um, and although they're not sort of lying, they're debilitated, they can, they are not fit to be out doing anything else. Um, a couple of adults in here who just from cast an eye around the room, you quickly get the impression are parents or loved ones of specific children who are, you know, in their care and for them. And just a sort of quiet falls across the room as everyone turns to look at these very unusual new arrivals and the ghoul ripper himself. I am just going to kind of walk from bed to bed, uh, glancing over uh, the sick and injured here. Um, I'm not doing any sort of bedside manner thing. I, I really am just walking over and like assessing the unwell. Maybe um, medicine check. Okay. With advantage. While you're doing this, what's the nest doing? I imagine that takes a few minutes for you to go around and maybe you have to make make introductions a couple of times and things like that. What's what's the nest choosing to do? The nest is keeping back. She's letting Whisper take lead in this, but she is looking around, flexing her hands at her side. Uh, you know, all these injured people. Uh, you know, who among them might be missed the least? <laughs> Christmas <laughs> eyes. <laughs> if I had my soundboard on at the moment, I would play the sound of, like, realization. <laughs> um... Okay, yeah. What was the result of your medicine check in the meantime? 14. Uh, make me a perception check, the Ness, while I'm going through. Uh, sorry, an insight check while I'm going through um, talking about. So, yeah, looking around, Whisper, you identify a few obvious injuries, like badly, badly rolled ankles. Um, or like a dislocated limb, um, a cut that is just not healing properly and is is infected, and a couple of a couple of them have the more yeah you know, the, the later stages of, of infection where what was probably just like getting cut or scratching a nail clambering through a broken doorway quickly has now turned into almost half an arm that is dark green and, and weeping. Um, you find several cases of what you very, very quickly identify as just absolute exhaustion. Um, and very possibly just a complete lack of hope, a low quality of life, just constantly fleeing. Um, so yeah, f physical, f physical and mental maladies just abound. Okay. Um, given the numbers that you gave me, I would like to uh, kind of pick a side of the room. Uh, I will be staying silent for up to ten minutes. <laughs> okay. At which point I will cast Prayer of Healing uh, before moving to the next side of the room and doing it again. What's the range on Prayer of Healing? Six people. Oh, sorry. Okay, six individuals. Um, Thirty feet, but like, I, six but a limit of six. That makes the... sense. So, yeah. Um, tell us what your ritual looks like as you're doing this. It'll be a, a ten-minute thing. Um. Yeah. So, uh, if <laughs> I, it's mostly, I will just sit on the ground. Um, and it looks like I am like praying, but were anyone to listen uh, very closely, like get close and listen, 
Um, it will sound a lot like I am repeating a, a creation myth that I believe Hazim and Vaness have heard already. Yeah. Um, you cast it in the um, in the spider's den, I believe, out of sheer necessity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but it'll start, you know, like Watch just very. Too. I think so. I, I, yeah. but I also in um, when we before we were even um, through the mists, I told the creation myth. I think. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you did. Uh, but yeah, it'll just be me, like long ago, Frith made the world, and I will just like go through the story of uh, when. Uh, this sun god originally promised uh, what they promised to my people. Uh, and then I will cast Prayer of Healing. Um, and then uh, after I do that, I will go around and check uh, on the people uh, that received that. Just making sure to inspect everything and see how they're doing. And then I will go and repeat the process on the other side of the room. Yeah. Um you find the refusal sort of like grunts and, and cries of sort of shock or, or pain as the spell completes um, as you know maybe a dislocated joint abruptly resets and, and things like that um, it's like yeah a collection of, of cries at the moment your spell just sort of peels um, the guards have a moment, it was a moment of not quite weapon reaching, but like alarm, but then it is immediately apparent on some of them, like, you know, an ankle that bent the wrong way is suddenly <laughs> fine. Um, those that had the exhaustion of just being hunted, they don't seem immediately cured, but you can see on them they look less the physical signs of exhaustion definitely look lessened. Maybe the rest of the healing will come with time. They certainly seem more comfortable and less immediately ruined. Um, so yeah, take, oh, you, already, you already take that off and you're just going to repeat it on the other room, are you? Uh, on the other side of the room. Yep. Uh, yep. In the meantime, Vaness, looking around, you do identify one girl of maybe nine or ten, short, messy red hair. The guards, um, a, co a couple of the, you know, almost all the kids have loved ones with them, or if not like a loved one who's looking after this child will, you know, tend, you know, tend to the other. There's, there's one kid who, although certainly not like neglected, just doesn't seem to have the quite so active attentions of, of an adult and, at one point, as you sort of looking around, this this child was sort of a, maybe a nothing else to to do, um, sort of catches your eye and just gives you a bit of like a a meek smile for a moment. Yeah, Vanessa catches her eye and uh, she she smiles back, but it's this there's this weight behind the smile that is unsettling to even Vanessa as she feels kind of like twitching in her palms and uh, she puts her hands behind her back and does her best to turn back towards uh, towards Whisper as she's reciting the story but she keeps catching glances back and at one point almost almost involuntarily she just waves and then immediately brings her arm back down and you get a bit of like a bit of like a look is it someone else sort of thing from her and then a bit of more genuine smile on her yeah Vanessa smiles back and then turns back towards Whisper yeah and um Whisper's spell concludes um there is another the similar collection of immediate physical relief and the physical aspects of some of the more exhausted children and teens. Um, 
a little bit of giggling in the room between kids. A couple of the adults look. It, it's one of those things, it's kind of like awkward territory to approach um, over the table when in a world where there is no magic in Falkovnia, you know, you have, they have just probably witnessed stuff that's on you know, miracle level healing of, you know, their, their, their children um, who have been exhausted and heavily injured. Someone's just wandered in and gone like, nah. And, you know, in the space of 20 minutes, um, a huge amount of physical and emotional healing has, has just been done. So, yeah, there's more than there's more than one tearful parent in there. All three of you in Hazim's absence. Because um, he, he would have had things to say during this. Um, I'm sure he would have been telling a story for kids, maybe. He'll probably tell me in chat now that no. He would have not. I'm putting words in his mouth. Um, the th yeah, the three of you would be getting pats on the back and hands being shaken if you you'd give them, and you'd be particularly, particularly thanked profusely. Whisper. Um, after inspecting just the second batch and making sure that everyone was, you know, as healed up as I could do for them, uh, I would actually walk back to Ghoul Ripper. Uh, and say, I believe mine and my companion's debt for not being robbed is now repaid. Debt for not being robbed? Because our whole thing no. with convincing them not to rob us and kill us was, no, no, no. We can yeah. help. Yeah. And, um, and he's a bit like still looking around the room, just like Without, uh, without question. Yes. Very you well. will. Um, the three of you will stay the night with us if you wish to. Or do must you be on your way? Uh, I will just look at Vanessa and and Hazine. Well, travel at night is dangerous. If you don't mind us staying until morning, at least. Absolutely. No, you are... You're most welcome here. If you don't mind my asking, if a raid does come, does it come during the night, or do they come during the day? Now is a difficult time. It's early enough in the month that it's... Hard to tell what is happening in Lakar. Everything depends on two things. Well, three. How bored the guards are. Is there any need for them to be travelling through Silbervas? And does Drakov have any grand new tactical scheme that involves using us as meat? This early in the month, they may still be recovering. They may still be celebrating and strategizing and too busy to consider us. Or if it was an easy month for them, they may want some sport. It is always a bloody month when this Irina is stationed in Fort Watton. Things have got better in a morbid way since Airy fell. For now, if she's not here, she is in Lekka, so she passes through less often. But Airy Airy is utterly lost. Airy is another outpost or a town. He seems like a little taken aback, but you don't. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, along the road, when you left Fort Watton and came to the Tyvelands, you would have had a left and a right, yes? And you came left and brought you here. Yes. To go right would take you over the southward, south of the Tyvelands and the heart soil and Morfenzi, and eventually would have brought you to Airy. 
amongst other places, but there is nothing but the undead now in Eri. The town fell and they do not leave. They remain content. Do they, do they control the, f- the fields now, the tithe lands? No. This is a ways beyond, beyond the extent of the tithe lands, which are guarded from Morfenzi. Your crop is everything here, of course. Do, do the undead typically leave once they have washed through a city? When there is no meat left, they wander to find the meat. Yet they stay at this. They do. Very. And they exhibit unusual behavior. Is this a recent development? I have not seen it anywhere before. But I know that those in Morfenzi, whenever I was stationed there, always maintained a keen interest in what drives the undead and could it be controlled, could it be tamed, what are their motivations? The motivations are simple, meat, except recently at Airy. You well, are the first I have spoken of, or spoken with, that has been willing to even admit that there may be additional motivations for the undead. I don't give me too much credit. I would have written it off until one of my best lieutenants to use a word from a former life where she is no longer with us. I trusted this woman with my life and she swore blind to me through no jest, through no misinterpretation or mistake made. She saw an undead outside the Vieri attempting to hoe, uh, attempting to till the field. Attempting. It must be hard to relearn skills once forgotten. We had uh, our own encounter with one who attempted speech. It was like a shot out from a couple of them. And carried a bag of belongings that seemed precious to it. And we think that the bag might have been... Well, I... Uh, they might have made the bag themselves. <laughs> I like the way of putting them. <laughs> what? They had, they had recently taken up crafting. <laughs> <laughs> the most terrifying thing about zombies. <laughs> made the into bag macrame. themselves. Gonna be, you're going to use intestines for macrame. It's going to be great. Oh, God. Like these beautiful plant holders. <laughs> <laughs> They're opening Etsy stores now. It's <laughs> So what they can weave, they can craft and tailor. It is unclear what all they can do. What did it, just... what did it say? You say it spoke? We didn't understand what it said. It might have been its own language. It might have been just trying to recall its common tongue, but it's mind it degenerated so much due to decay that it just was performing these words that maybe it was just doing it on instinct on action and not real thought at one point it seemed to be trying to say a name what's the name DM, i don't remember but if you make me make me an intelligence check both of you uh I knew it at the time, but I don't. You did. Remember. I, I remember that you did. Yeah, I mean, I like she would have rolled. She would have written it down in her book, but it's fine. 
She's also talking. She, she has intelligence. She has been journaling quite a lot, hasn't she? Yeah. Uh, oh, the, the, yeah, Vanessa. You have heard enough now that I would say, given all the information that you've had so far, you probably would have drawn a conclusion. The thing that the undead kept sort of crying out or noise was, Larry! Larry! Which he perhaps Ow. might now connect as possibly being airy. It's, uh, it sounded like it was trying to say airy. Hmm. Perhaps I'm Harry this whole time. <laughs> that was my plan, Harry. <laughs> but when you got back to Fort Watton and Captain August mentioned the Airy, I was waiting for you to be like, <laughs> "Nope, nope." I was too stuck on the name of a person, That's not fun. a place. That's fine. So Ghoul Ripper just gives a bit of a. It seems you may have. Oh no, you haven't. That's that's DM knowledge, not play knowledge. What became of this? Speaking undead. Uh, my face will darken, and I will just look over at Vanessa and Hazim. Allowing them to explain. We... Should we tell them the truth, this question? <laughs> Vanessa says out loud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone, why is everyone looking at me? Um, <laughs> no. Uh, Frisha was unfortunately slain. Uh, Irina, her and her men. Well, they didn't. Uh, they saw it as a piece of meat, a piece of undead that needed to be exterminated, and so that's what they did. Make me a deception check. Uh, 13. He just sort of looks at you as you tell this and then just gives a long and just thumbs at the edge of his mouth while he's thinking for a moment and just looks you up and down the nest before sort of giving a bit of a slow nod. That is unfortunate. Most unfortunate. It is. It seems there could have been wisdom to have been gained into all of our fates if only it hadn't been killed. Well, to be fair, I think it was dead already, but uh, Arena and her, her men, her soldiers, they, they don't care. Uh, the undead is the undead. We tried to explain to her what we saw, but it didn't matter. Did Garold know of this? Garold? Garold. Oh, sorry. Um, Captain August. Oh, I didn't realize he had a name. A first name, rather. Uh, Old habits, I sorry. Would he, I would assume he did. I, I mean, I read a direct report to him. Oh, then if word makes it... To him. If word gets to Morfenzi... The mad dog may be in trouble. I imagine... Drakov would not be happy to know that such an opportunity was not capitalized upon by the doctor. I'm sure she had her reasons. However base they may be. Was her mouth frothing? Just sort of like half... Half smirks towards you, um, Whisper. We'll feed you and give you whatever you care to drink that we have. These children should rest now. And we can talk more in, in the hall. Miss? Yes. And as yes. You see through the, the window slit that the sun is starting to go down when you are escorted with sort of a few more pats on the backs and, and mutters of thanks 
through to a uh, sort of dime hall area. And that is where we will take a 15 minute break. So yeah, we'll be back in 15 for a little bit more. We're back and I've got wonky during the break. Don't know how that happened. There we go. Um, so, what'd you say? I said sus. Um, you throw me with that now. Yes, the children are healed. Um, the see the staff like it's a like it's a hotel. Um, yeah, the guards, the bandits, for lack of a better word, even by their own admission, are immensely grateful, and you are invited to spend the night. Um, you are taken through to a large ish hall with two heavy wooden tables and benches um the half in there is completely collapsed and caved in from the structural damage but you see there are in two of the corners that don't have doorways essentially like brick fire pits have been assembled with um rubble from the collapsed castle uh well collapsed guardhouse and Although they're not lit yet, they are starting to be, you know, prepared for lighting. Um, seeing you look, if you look over, the ghoul ripper is like, we only light the fires after dark and only in certain locations. The smoke betrays us more than the light. It's very smart of you to do that. Uh, uh, DM, are, is, so so is everything basically concentrated in this keep, like the infirmary and like mutual living quarters? Is that is that how do you mean concentrated? Well, so like we went to see the infirmary, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. and that was in the keep, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, do people seem to occupy this keep mostly, or do they spread themselves out throughout the abandoned buildings? Ah, I see. Um, like you don't know. Just take, it, well, I mean, I would have been looking on the way there. Yeah, well, you, you saw people. In, you saw people in houses, glancing out at you. Um, there were definitely people who were inside other buildings, but this is by far the largest concentration of people. If, if this were raised, um, it would be explained that... What? I so said that would be a real shame if it was raised. <sighs> um, Ghoul Ripper. Yes? Ghoul Ripper. <laughs> so he, he looked at you, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Wait, um, Goozy! <laughs> Oi. Ghoul. Um... So, uh, this keep, uh, for lack of a better term, is this just your infirmary? I, I mean, this seems to be a general community space, but what do you, do people occupy the, uh, the old houses too? Uh, it's effectively being on patrol was stationed people in choice buildings throughout the town to keep an eye out for any of Drakov's forces we have groups stationed hidden off the road to the north and south as you found out to alert us of anyone on the way Whilst and a couple of them are in my room, so I've got their own business now. Whilst these waylaid you, a runner came and alerted us here. So by the time you were brought, by the time you were brought back, we were already ready to bolt. The keep is useful to maintain a presence in because there are a couple of old escape routes, tunnels. 
But you don't go far, but it's better than being caught surrounded in a cottage in the town. Ostadakov sharpens a, sharpens a stake for you. The people that come here... How do they end up here? At what point... I know that you say you are... None of you loyal to Drakov, but... What are your... Quarrels... With Drakov, or... The... Military... In general? Life here is not how it should be. People. Drakov sells it as being necessary for the survival of the whole against the undead. But she's empty and cold and calculating. And every time that her extreme measures stave off the undead for another month, everyone left behind is a little less for it. The things that she does, the things, the things that I did and that he did, and that she did. Many of us served. Many of us were talons or were guards, fought in defense, but the soul gets sick of doing so many terrible things. And of course, it is easy at the time to say that you've been doing it for the defense of all Falkovnia. And what is what is the life of everybody in Lekar City against a wagon of travelers or a small village? It's an easy lie to tell yourself at the time. Now, I cannot. Each of us broke in our own way. They call it desertion. But any one of them would turn on another. I did it. The smallest inconvenience. Stealing bread to feed a family? Theft. Theft from Falkovnia. How can we succeed against the undead if we fall to lawlessness? Impaled. For stealing a loaf of bread. I've done it. I've put people to death. For crimes just as petty. But there's no point giving up everything for survival like that. If it comes up a cost of the spirit of being alive. They're not alive in Lekar. They live, but... Such cold, frightened little half-lives. Any and every one of us could be killed tonight. By the undead, or by Drakov and her dogs. By Irina. But we will all know that we've been good to each other. Even at the end. Even if it took some of us far, far too long to realize it. We'll know that we've begun. We will die having lived. Does this make any sense to you? Who have come from beyond and never had these woes? We've had woes of a different sort. Mm. There are always walls. 
community, but uh, there are stories uh, from long ago, my people, that are very similar. So I understand what you are saying. Well, when's the last time that you saw Drakov? From afar, I saw her maybe four months ago. She was riding. The last time I met her, about five years. Uh, five years, four months, two weeks. Great memory that you have. Uh, where was she riding to or from? Morfenzi. She ran into Morfenzi from Lekar. The doctor had something to show her. She probably rode out there to see the state of his research. Have you ever met this doctor? Oh, yes. What we've heard of him has not been, uh, you know, he seems to be very peculiar in his interests and in his mannerisms. He has He is a fascinating man. He has a mind that works like no other I have met. And yet, I fear he may be utterly broken and dangerous beyond comprehension. That is a mind that would sacrifice anything on anyone in the pursuit of knowledge. Even, even Drakov would not be left alone with him. What is their history together? Has, how was he appointed to such position with her? Even if she doesn't trust him. I have heard that he is her brother. I have heard he used to be her lover. I have also heard that he came, much like you perhaps, from beyond the mists a great deal of time ago. Morfenzi well, had an assistant, uh, someone named Strad. Is this <laughs> someone that you're familiar with? Or yes, you? I've, I've met Strad. What of them? What, what of them? Why is this a name that rings out to you? He's a nobody, a laboratory assistant. We have reason to believe he may have information as to why the three of us are here. Anything could be true, but that seems unlikely. Unlikely as it sounds, it does seem to be something that is of interest to us, but if you have no other information, that's quite all right. I... He's... He was friendly enough, unremarkable, never caused problems with the guards, never seemed particularly to excel for the doctor, it was just a one of one of many who worked away there. What did he look like? Uh well built scruffy beard. Hair to about shoulder length. All things that could change. Blonde or brunette? Brunette. Just making sure. Um, well, in any case, uh, he's, an, he's a person of interest to us. Um, however unlikely he may be to have answers, it's still someone we, we are on the lookout for. You won't find him anywhere except Morfenzi. I've never once known him to leave. Ever? 
He is always at the lab, assisting. I, I was not stationed there all the time, but people would ride and head off or would take a refreshment in what passed for a tavern in Morfenzi, or they were free to build a shack or a homestead around the village surrounding the manor which houses the laboratory. I never saw him do any of these things. I don't think I ever even caught him outside of the manor. So what is the evening here like? You said that fires are kept, but kept low, or at least enough to brighten your paths. What else do you have? Quiet drinks, but not too many. Maybe some cards, quiet conversation. I'm afraid this is not like the, uh, like the whistle. No, the wait, it's now the pecker, isn't it? Yes. These places, the come on, bro. The bloody pecker. No yes. doubt a hilarious honorarium to the Crimson Falcon. You know, I didn't get that until just now. The owner there is the father whose life is on the line for this boy of his who the arena suspects has gone uh, AWOL. And if they haven't killed him? No, not yet. Ah. They have agreed. How long does he have? How long is the game? What was, what was it, two days? Two days, two days. Was it two days? Whisper. It was, yeah. yeah. Two days. She likes to make people worry. No doubt he will be sat in a cell or allowed to sit in his bar, wondering, will it be as painful as all the ones he has seen? Now I've put enough people on the spike to know that it is. He, d he doesn't look Kehab. he doesn't look happy saying that <laughs> yeah if Kehab didn't come here and if he wasn't attacked by anything in between uh, the fort and silver bass where do you think he might have gone he could not have gone across this road my eyes would have absolutely seen him if it is not common knowledge of what is happening at Airy, he may have tried to go that way. How old was the boy, did you say? He appeared to be in something in his 20s. So he served, which means he knows the dangers of a hard soil, so he will not have tried to cross the Morfenzi on foot. So he's either gone to Airy, where if he went in, he is almost certainly dead. Or he may have crossed the Tivelands to the Zamaria Ranch, though I do not know why he would. What is this ranch? He's the main... know this ranch? Um, no, you did see in the distance some sort of farm-type complex across the Tivelands, but no one has spoken to you about this yet. Um, okay. okay. So, it is dangerous here to have a farm dotted out in the middle of a field. The farms are held together in somewhat of a compound. Is this the farm that you saw in the undead trying to till the fields? No, that was outside of that was outside of the area. The Tivelands, there are smaller patches of farmland, of course, but you've seen the Tivelands, you've seen the expanse. That that feeds most of the land. It needs to be protected in a different way. 
uh, what business he would have had over at Zamiara. I don't know. Maybe a relative, or... Maybe he wanted to try and pass... Pass himself off and... Escape his desertion and work as a farmhand, though he could not turn up anywhere. And not have... Everywhere is guarded. For comfort, the, the ranch is guarded. For what could be more important than protecting the source of our food. And the guards shift would change. Someone would see the boy. That makes no sense. Whisper is going to... I'm not going to fight against Vanessa looking into this so hard, but... I am just more and more believing that the owlbears must have gotten him. And like, at the same time... Walked outside of the fucking... Is the, pl is the player... Uh, is Luke of the player getting more and more frustrated at the, the live? No, though uh, <laughs> I do, as a player, think it's funny that we may end up going to Aerie to find... To try and find him. <laughs> it's like super imaginary goose chase. The I commitment am. to the bit I'm here uh, for it. on I'm absolutely here behalf for it. of Vanessa is is very uh, is admirable. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I just whisper. I, I I'm just gonna look at Vanessa and like, you know, I realize that she seems to be very hopeful that he's just ran away and we can sort yeah. this out. But um, I very much believe that he got eaten by those owl bears and now his dad is gonna pay the price. Beyond that, I don't know where else he could have gone. It is unlikely he went to Gralock House, for the same problem would apply there. The guards, everywhere is guarded. He would not have gone to Delmunster. He would not have gone to Willow Watch. He may have gone and decided to take his chances as just a lone man. There are said to be some out near the traitors who band together in small groups of two or three and eke out what sort of living they can. Either way, Vanessa, I... Do not think we will be able to find him in under two days. So I am willing to try if you are set on it. I'm not. Uh, I just... I'd like to use this opportunity to see more of the land and at least uh, yeah, have a better understanding of where we are. And if we just so happen to find Kehab in the process, then, well, even better. If nothing else, it does give us good reason to spend time roaming, looking for this person that we were sent to look for, wherever it may take us. If you've been given two days, though, I would not tarry longer than that to return to the fort unless you yourselves want to be branded as deserters. Unless you're intending, of course, to not return. How well, that is the does... question, isn't it? How quickly does word travel from the fort to Morfenzi? I assume that it is by foot or horse that messages are passed? If it's official business, it will be on horseback, yes. So if we were to go anywhere else, Vanessa, I think we would either have to return to the fort and continue surviving or 
get to Morfenzi before any word of us not returning reaches there. That would take you three days if you had horses. You may have the coat of the Morfenzi, but you lack their art, and so you must take the long way. And then ride up past yeah, Willow Watch and past Lakar along the Watcher's Row and down the Hunting Way until you reach Morfenzi from the north. You cannot cross, cross the hard soil. Hmm. Well... I think we'll have some, have some time to think about it, at least when Hazim wakes up, uh, seeing how he's been passed out this entire time. Old guy. In the meantime, I, we should at least settle in for the night. Again, I prefer not to travel at night if it's possible. Oh yes, we're, I think you're we're settled in. Right and you see some like plates of, of rations of them passed around and a bit of a hard tack, but you can see someone's done the best they can with a bit of foraging. It's all supplemented by, there is a surprising um, amount and quality of small and modest sized fish. Where did you get this fish from? Silvervas sits on Lake Kriegvogel. The fishing is fair. Well, uh, at least not all of this land has been blighted. Do you have a, a space for us to sleep for the night? I'm sorry to say that... No. Yes, of course. The three of you can have... I am afforded... a room. But tonight... We do not require it is free... anything. I won't hear anything else. The three of you will have my room. I could do of... keeping watch for once, so I will stay out here with... the guards. And you'd have seen walking around that it is very much like there are if there is a if there is a space of wall where wall meets floor, if it is not a travelled path, there is a sleeping pile there. Um it almost looks like organized vagrancy. Um just where you can fit a bedroll, you get a bedroll. People are just sleeping on every every room in addition to its function is also a dorm. Um But yeah, um the ghoul ripper insists the three of you take his room. Um, it's up to it's up to, if you if you want it, you might want to split it. You might want Hazim to sleep out here with uh, with guards. I'm sure Hazim will be fine. Um, but he he either way he yields his room out of insistent gratitude to you all. What's it again? Hazim's already asleep, so he's yeah. fine. Hazim has just been asleep and he's in a T pose in the infirmary asleep. Yeah. Oh, I thought he just kind of curled up like, you know, like a little fox ball, just yeah. kicking his feet while he's streaming. <laughs> um, okay, I will, I mean, if, if he's insistent, I will allow him to lead us to his room that he's giving up. Uh, but I will tell him that I... So you're, you're heading down for the night now, are you? Because it's, it's early dusk. People are... Somewhat surprised if you're heading to bed that early, or you just want to say that small talk is made for an even, or do you have your own? Do you want some privacy to talk things over? I kind of want. Privacy yeah, to talk yeah, things abso over. absolutely. It's more like, oh, we're so tired. We've been spent on the road. Yeah, with all the healing. Now we need to go to bed early. Yeah, yeah then um, they are very, very happy to um, lead you off to his chambers, and he just takes a moment to like grab a couple of things you see you know, it, not like the secret lead lined chest he gets like obviously what's obviously a couple of shirts and uh, it gets like a, a, a shirt and, and things like that and bids you all a good night takes an extra like blanket out of the wardrobe and like throws it down on the floor and wishes you all a good night and steps out and it is but two of the three of you yeah, I imagine um, uh, Hazim is just at the foot of our bed. 
just like again curled up <laughs> whimpering a bit um he has actually contributed to the chat, Jack, but he has eaten all the children before you can. That's what he was doing in this quiet yeah. time. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Cool. Good for him. Um, I am just, I'm going to sit on the bed and, and look at them uh, and just say, what, what is our, uh, what is our plan? Admittedly, um, Kehab, and by extension his father's fate, is not a high priority for me. Uh, I would prefer to not see him die for his son's desertion, but, or as you, as you, you know, as you've said, maybe it was just a simple matter of beast meets man. Uh, but I think, well, I know my focus is on it is on getting closer to Drakov, at least to getting into Morfenzi and figuring out if we can reach to the, reach this straw person and see if what kind of answers he might have, or at least give more context to the things that we found of his. So do we return to the fort, try and stay on good terms with them, and then hopefully be able to somehow make our way to Morvenzi or do we essentially run and try and beat any messengers to Morvenzi that is... I, I doubt they will just let us go they won't let us go no. and if Morvenzi is as as secure as Irina and Grave Ripper, have, Ghoul Ripper, rather, have uh, have explained, then it's going to be trouble trying to get in ourselves. Maybe we keep allies for now in both areas, here and in the fort. Irina, despite your dislike of her, seems to still have an interest in you as a party something that I think we can exploit. I know. It's not fun, but... If that is what you think is best, that is what I will do. Well, it's just what I think. Uh, unfortunately, Hazim has been passed out this entire time, so I'm sure he'll have opinions when he does wake up. But for now, we'll, we'll stay that course unless he has other thoughts. But really, what kind of thoughts would he have on? What are the chances there is a raid tonight? Well, he said the last one was a few weeks ago. Irina seems to be still at the, at the, uh, at the fort. She said nothing about having any time off or doing any kind of traveling. So I hope and... Uh, I hope that our chances are slim for that. If there are, though, we'll have to be prepared to hide, I think. I'm going to glance at Hazim. Do we think that is something we are capable of? Hiding, yes. I think we're very capable of it. I've seen you burrow, and I can... I can get out of sight if I need to, and I'm sure Azim is pretty skilled in that regard as well. While hearing others undergoing the raid, I would be surprised to see Hazim hide. I would be too, but we have to think about the triad. We have to think about our lives here and what's best for us. These people... I can't speak for either of you, but I... I'm no hero. I... I didn't even choose to come here. And while I... Well, I pity the suffering of anybody who doesn't deserve it, and I don't think these, these people do deserve it. I think that Irina and by extension, Drakov are cruel people. 
I don't, I think we have to play this smart. I, I, getting on their bad side keeps us, or at least makes the journey to getting more answers much harder. These people have been very helpful here at Silver Voss, but they don't, at least as far as I know or can tell, they don't have the keys to our success. They don't have the keys to us getting more answers. I believe you are right. And even if we wanted to help the people of this land, we would not do so in such small ways. Not anything lasting, at least. If... If... If we are to return to the fort and attempt to play all sides in order to survive and make it to Morfenzi so that we can find answers, um, then I will support that plan. I think it's the best that we can do until we see a clear path to where we can get out of here. At least get to more frenzy, if not lack of, and I think just keeping a low profile as best as we can, uh, at least keeping as many friends and their allies as we can in the process will serve us in the long run, however long we end up staying here. I, I agree. Do we What's think the... we should... Oh, I was Sorry, just going to say, what does, what does Vanessa pick up from Whisper as far as, like, when she says agree, is she doing it begrudgingly, or is it, like, she understands? No, this isn't so much, like, with the undead person that we handed over. It's more just... My instinct is to hide and run, and yet there's nowhere to hide and run to here, uh, really. Mm -hmm. um so it's it's more like i have the information that i have and i'm trying to piece it together as best i can but ultimately i am just placing my trust in staying with the group um whatever that may be so i i i would like to help uh these people like ideally however uh i understand that so much of it is not only my fight, but definitely not even something I can attempt to influence with such small piecemeal actions in any sort of like real lasting change. So yeah, at this point it's like we need more information. We need to survive. So stay with the group. Stay alive. I rhymed by accident. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Find, save the straw leader, save the world. Yeah. Whisper, please make me a wisdom saving throw. You can do so Jesus. at a plus two, thanks to Knights of Castania. Okay. Why, is Why am I bro? doing this? <laughs> Fuck. Um, okay. Plus two. I mean, oh, if this is the save against Sazim farting in a sleep, it shouldn't be Constitution. 18. Looking around the room, settling in, tired. There is a moment where, at the corner of your eye, you feel like you just see a tall, long, black shadowy figure. And as soon as you sort of notice it, your attention fixes on it for a moment and the red glowing eyes, and before you can even focus on it fully, it was never there. It was just almost like movement in the peripheral vision for a moment. Vanessa it saw, was saw nothing. It was black and shadowy with red glowing eyes, though? Yes. Whisper? Whisper. 
What is it? I just fear that we are constantly barely outrunning death. Oh, uh, on the plus side, if we die, there's a good chance we'll get back, get back up. It's morbid as that is. Perhaps we can become farmers in the area. It can be quiet so. life. Yeah, the provincial life. We'll make handbags. We'll churn our own butter. <laughs> zombie cows. And... I'm so glad you went that way and not Chumbawamba. I really thought you were heading towards Chumbawamba then. No, I'm so happy. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Oh, um, I get up. Um, yeah. um, so. Whisper's gonna stretch and look ready for bed though. Uh, like, after this talking. I mean, it really actually was a long day, so. <laughs> um, I am thinking of joining Hazim in sleep. Do we need to set a watch? Perhaps. Uh, I was just going to go for a walk, though, just to kind of get a better sense of the surroundings of the village. Uh, but when I come back, I'll let you know, and then maybe we can do a bit of a watch. Okay. And, I will just uh, kind of settle in and, and try and stay awake until you get back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I assume that this talk we would have maybe talked a bit more, and like it's it's gotten later into the day, or even into evening. No, or maybe yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, heading out, uh, noticing that it's much much later in the day, and it's now clearly in the evening. Uh, I assume that some of the fires are lit. Uh, yeah. Are. Yeah. It's it's definitely. The lighting is poor compared to, like, any actual inhabited stone building you've ever gone around. You see, maybe one in five sconces is lit. There is the expectation quite quickly, not that you're concerned, that you are effectively seeing by low candlelight getting around. You could easily, like, and the clear thoroughfares have been, like, brushed of all rubble. But um, to the outside... You would struggle to see this being lit looking through. There are no big, you know, roar and fires. Everyone's very much sort of like around a little bit in the dark. But yeah, people are some are sleeping. You can see there is obviously an established and efficient shift sleeping system. Mm -hmm. You would quickly you would quickly gather that unless someone was able to fit through the arrow slit of your you know of your room, you don't need to worry about being involved in the air. I was clearly no expectation that you're taking a shift. Okay. Uh, well, Vanessa's going to keep to the, the perimeter uh, until she gets to the keep. And once there, uh, she's going to head to the infirmary. But as quietly as possible, even if it involves her climbing up and like scaling the ceiling, if there is a ceiling anymore. Okay, let me self check. With advantage as it is dark, and because no one has dark vision. Okay. It's a dirty 20. Yeah, you make it to the infirmary. Just I get there, I kind of scale down the wall very quietly, and I see the bed of the young girl with the red hair. Well, so if you, if you were to go into the infirmary, yes, I... you would see. There are quite a few people in here now. A lot of sort of family members have come to bed and are using this as, this as like a family bedroom for quite a few. There are parents who are obviously up late with like the emotion of the day and their children being sort of healed. Um, there are sort of like quiet stories being read. Um, and you will see that um, this young redhead girl is included in one of these, she is sort of fallen asleep, sort of half, arm half draped over another child um, in a bit of a, a, a cuddle puddle of some stories being read by a couple of parents. In addition to the kids that are in here, there's maybe also about nine adults in here as well tonight. How 
How big is this room? So f 30 foot by 20. It's got a, um, oh, I forgot my name. A curved, a, cu a curved wall that if you want to be a turrets. Shit, there's a word for it and I've forgotten it. Uh, so as she's standing, keeping herself close to the I'm wall, sure. uh, looking over at this child, seeing the group of, of people who are congregating and reading and having, you know, kind of winding down for the night. And a few of the kids uh, and most of the adults, sorry, would have given you like a nod and smile of recognition. The little girl would have given you another little wave. You know, you are one of the, the helpful people who's turned up. Okay. So yeah, you are, um, you are welcomed. Uh, so she'll sit down. If the, if the girl that, uh, the redhead that she'd seen earlier is awake, then she'll just kind of sit down on the bed beside her. What's your name? Maxine. Hi, Maxine. Are you here by yourself? I don't see you with anybody. My father is in Lekar. Is he planning on coming back here, or does he know you're here? Gould says we don't know. And you see she's sort of like interested by you, but is perhaps more interested in the story and keeps sort of drifting back to the story and like answering your questions. She doesn't say anything. She lets she just keeps sitting there and, and stops talking to let the girl who's clearly more interested in the story roll over and listen to the story um but as she rolls over uh, there's a moment where uh, vanessa just kind of takes off her one of her gloves and she just kind of looks down at her palm and sees the twitching throbbing mouth there the blackened fangs kind of chittering to her and uh she reaches out towards the young girl and not touching her just kind of strokes the back of her hair and she takes her wrist and, and closes her eyes and focuses holding her fist as tightly as she can before putting on her glove and uh looking back the, at the young girl again and uh Do I wanna? Hmm. What's that? Oh, sorry, did you say, so, do, I, do I wanna, did you say? Do I wanna? Okay. So know. I was gonna say, it's been a few days since she's eaten. Um, and there's a lot, there's, I mean, there's enough people around that if she did something and the girl ends up dead, it's pretty safe to assume that at this level, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. <sighs> well, she will look at the others and just, uh, there's a moment where she looks at the young girl's red hair and it reminds her of her own. And she, she's sitting on the, the edge of the bed. She has this moment as she's put on her glove that uh, she remind, she remembers listening to stories at her house. Uh, most of them were told by the uh, the governesses who would work there. Uh, don't, Med, I'm tempted, don't you know, don't you know it? Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, she just has kind of like moments of looking at the fire, looking at the at the girl's red hair, and then lo looking at the the one of the mothers who is reading to the other children, and uh, she's trying to use that as a means to control herself, essentially. Uh, and so I am going to actually make a wisdom save to see if I can control it, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Self-imposed consequences rolls always up for that. Oh, Matt has given you a plus two to this roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 
You imposed it on yourself. You tell me how you're feeling. Uh, I mean, she's smart. So I'm actually going to use the inspiration to see if I get a better roll. Uh, and that is another... That would also be a plus two, given that it would have been rolled at the same time. <laughs> Let's go. So. Sorry, Luca. As... Uh as she is trying to steal herself. The, the sensation, the, the aberrant whispers that she hears when she gets into the space just become overwhelming. And she looks over at the center of the room and her eyes go black as she casts darkness over the entire room. And I'll just go ahead and throw that out. It would be ill-advised and impatient. And as all of the lights in the room go out, and as everything is blanketed in darkness, She almost mindlessly peels away her glove and slips her hand underneath the back of uh, of the young girl's shirt and just places it on her like on her, on her back, but where her heart would be, and just begins to let the the mouth do what it does. Her hands the veins in her hands become blackened and start to throb and crawl up her neck and uh, and as she continues uh, she is trying to I mean the girl's sick so I don't imagine uh, it, it's going to take too much effort to drain her but uh, yeah she uh, she is going to withdraw the life out of this young girl and immediately as she gets her fix she, she her, her 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 she snaps back into this more rational state and realizing what she's done she throws she takes her hand back she she looks out at her hand she that she's muttering to herself very quietly no damn it and looking around, she sees everything blanketed in, in this uh, the, the darkness spell. She puts her Remind me, can on. she see through it herself? No, but she was sitting right next to her, which is why. Yeah, because obviously there's a couple of cries in the room as it suddenly just plunged into darkness. As you know, adults were sat there reading books with sort of like cries of the children start crying in terror as this sort of happens and parents shout an alarm. Um, so in this dark shroud, you do hear like the door being flung open and there are sudden like, st footsteps in the room, but they're very unsure, confused footsteps. There's obviously chaos going on here at the moment. And yeah, so at this point, uh, Vanessa's obviously uh, feeling the pressure, and she's going to go ahead and do her best to sneak out as quietly as she can to go back to... Uh, back to... Uh, the quarters that, that were given to her and the others. Make a stealth check with advantage. Over the table, are you considering out of character the fact that you, the, the nest will conspicuously have been gone from the room? <laughs> Again, let's why did the wisdom save? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. 15, yeah, you, you don't encounter, you don't encounter anyone as you escape out uh, and when she gets back to this uh, to the hold uh, before she enters the same room that Whisper and Hazima are in she stops and she slides down against a nearby wall and she just looks down at her hands 
just frustrating. Uh, she she does that thing where she's she screams, but she's there's no there's no volume, there's no voice that comes out. It's just this silent anger that she has, um, and not wanting to you know stir anyone else awake. Uh, she takes a moment, takes a deep couple of deep breaths, and stands up, kind of adjusts her coat, adjusts her posture, gets back into that very very stately manner of being. And as, she, as she's adjusting, and just trying, I'm trying to regain that composure. You've been so restrained up until this point. What happened? Stop. Do right. you feel guilty? I don't like being used. I can take it back if you want. She had done nothing wrong. Would you like for me to bring her back? They don't know yet. But answer quickly. Before the alarm is raised, shall I take it back? I can bring her back. No one will ever know. Just save a word. So she could end up like me? Nothing of a sort. She's innocent. When the voice calls her innocent, the child innocent, Mm -hmm. yeah, she, her heart, her stomach just kind of sinks and... She closes her eyes and takes a moment to consider the offer. Do what you must. Just make sure it's clean. I don't want us... I don't want any more heat on either of us. Any of us. There is no reply. She takes another deep breath. Adjusts her self straightens her back and very casually enters the room quietly though is to not try and wake whisper and walks in backwards Hazim's like where are you going (laughs) nowhere I'll stay here but yeah you find you find whisper and Hazim well you say whisper was trying to stay awake did you say or did you think she succumbed yeah Um, I was trying I doubt I succeeded (laughs) (laughs) make a constitution saving throw whisper Above above ten, you're awake. Below ten, you succumbed. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they are I'm both very as- much just like slumped over. <laughs> yeah, they are both asleep. And anything else Vanessa does before she heads to bed herself? No, she. But she's feeling guilty is the wrong word for it. But uh, definitely a certain level of shame and. I think in, because of that, she's going to go to the cupboard uh, or the armoire that uh, Ghoul Rupert had taken a blanket out of and see if there's another blanket. There is, and yeah. And also, uh, make- Vanessa, you have the benefit of a long rest already. Yes, it's yeah. true. Uh, so she's going to make a little bit of a pallet on the floor, and she does. She can't sleep because of what has happened and so she's just going to spend the night journaling and going through any other kind of materials that she has just making notes and... yeah and very very quickly because we do have to stop um but at one point very soon after you've been in there a guard would come into the room just checking you're all accounted for something weird has gone on in another room nothing nothing to be alarmed about um is everything okay and and he'll just describe briefly that everyone seemed to lose their sight for a moment or some sort of something they're not familiar magic he would describe in non in squib terms um this sudden well, lack of just vision went out, that's all um but then he would return to his business and yeah that is where we are going to leave tonight um a little bit shorter than our usual sessions but 
real life happened uh, and continues to happen. So yeah, thank you very much for joining us for a very sort of chatty downtime RP session. Thank you, Jack and Luca, for doing more than usual. We were, we were one down. Thank you for, for stepping up with uh, even more talk. And yeah, we will very quickly go around. Um, I'm going to ask Luca to do hers first because I know that she has to go. So yeah, Luca. Hi, I'm Luke Locke, uh, and um, today I played Whisper, the uh, the shifter wild hunt cleric, um, and I regret going to sleep. Uh, and I have the next like week off from any other streams, so uh, just catch me back here for next Tuesday uh, for Fragments again. Uh, followed by my campaign that evening, uh, Harper's Variants. Uh, that's it for me. Cool, thank you. Go, go, go. Over to Jack. Uh, Jack, I played Vanessa. I didn't do anything, I swear. Uh, <laughs> you can't catch me anywhere until next week, so I will see you all Tuesday. Brilliant, thank you. I'm Harrison, I was the DM. Um, I don't think I'm doing anything either until Tuesday, so all three of us are quiet until next week's fragments um but yeah thank you very much for watching we'll catch you all next week and until then quippy signing offline <laughs>